Hi, this is Alma and welcome to my book journey. As you can see, I am outside today. Such a beautiful day this morning and I just wanted to see how it would look to, to film out here in the nice uh, cool breeze. We'll see how it works. <laughs> um, the video that I have for you today is is has to do with Amanda's uh, book looker, book lover Amanda's new readathon that she has coming out next month, and that is the Southern Charm readathon. And when she posted her vi announcement video, I was super excited because, like many of you, we uh, did this last year when she did it, and I was it was curious that she decided to leave the same prompts. And at first, I thought really she's gonna do the same prompts but then after I was thinking about it I was like well that's pretty cool because then I can kind of compare um, what I read last year and to see if you know what how that all worked out and so and so today for this video I just wanted to to tell you what I read last year for her prompts and then and then I have those here that I, I made this cute little uh, entry last year and I'll just go through those with you and these could be like recommendations for you as you look for you know books to do her her readathon and I didn't realize how warm it's gonna <laughs> it was already this you know we had really lot well as you know I don't know if many of you watched my video I think I posted it last week um, that we had our we had like a tornado come through. And so we've had uh, some odd weather, strange weather. And, um, but we, this uh, past couple of days, just our temperatures <laughs> went up. And I'm looking forward to next week because um, it's gonna be nice, nice weather. And I'll be able to come out here and read and, which is one of my favorite things to do when it's spring and uh, summer, just come out into my backyard and just sit in and read so all right so i um as some of you know i just started booktube in december but i found um the booktube uh, community last year and for the whole year i really you know had a lot of fun i had a lot of fun participating in a lot of the monthly readathons and uh, Amanda's was one of my favorites and as I was looking through my list here I was like I read some really good books that month and so like I said I just want to go through these with you and just real quickly and give you maybe a, some recommendations if you're thinking about joining and hopefully you will join in in the reading thong with us and so the first um, the first prompt that she gives us is bless your heart an emotional and heartwarming re read and for that prompt last year i read bless uh, bless your heart no that's, that's the prompt I'm for that um prompt i read where the road bends by rachel fordham and that was so good um that book is a historical fiction Christian and it was about a woman who and I don't I read that on the B. Um, I read most of these uh, most of these on the B. Here comes the breeze. And so it's about a woman lives in Iowa and she um, is alone. Her parents have passed away and she is running her family farm by herself and it's been very difficult for her. And she's single and she decides it would be beneficial if she married someone that would be able to help her run her farm and so she is engaged to a man that she really doesn't love or anything it's more of a marriage of convenience and but she figures that's the best way for her to to keep her farm and her home her home her homestead well one day she is out in her fields and she comes across a man that's laying there like just laying there beaten and and he's wounded and and she is has a kind heart kind, kind spirit she goes and helps him 
pulls him, you know, brings him all the way back. You know, it's a big effort because she's by herself. But she takes him all the way back to her home and she nurses him back to health. And you can already see that there's a connection between them right away. But she, he stays there um, quite a while, kind of in secret because, you know, she's a single woman and she has this man in her home, but she's, she is uh, helping him recover. And then, after, you know, and she tells, you know, they tell each other their stories and, and she encourages him because he is really down on his luck and she encourages him to, to not give up, to keep going and to press on and, and just really have, have hope. And he, she sparks that hope in him and he, when he leaves, she, she sends him off. She gives him her father's, some of her father's clothes, and she, you know, she tells him again, you know, to, you know, don't give up and keep going. And he, so he leaves, and he, you know, he tells her, you know, he'll pay her back someday for all the good, for all the help that she has given him. So then uh, the book uh, kind of goes. It, um, jumps time and we find the same man in another town and I think it's like five years and he has because of her encouragement he has um, made his life better and he's um, he's he's uh, he's got um, uh, he owns a uh, property and and he's a good bit and he's a businessman and I as I was reading I'm like wow five years he did all that but there's a there's a reason why and I don't want to say that anything about well how he gets that but because that's part a big part of the story but anyway that was a really good book um really wonderful and the story goes on from there so so that was for the bless your heart bless your heart bless your heart um problem. The next one is Sweet Tea, a book with something sweet on the cover. And for this one, I found this book at the library by uh, Rachel Hannah. Sorry, I got my notes here. Rachel Hannah. And oh, dropping books. She is the author of this book. And it's about, it's called Sweet Tea. Oh, my notes. Maybe it is too, too windy out here. Um, it's called Sweet Tea and B&B, &B and the B Sweet Tea B&B, &B, and it's about a bed and breakfast that's called Sweet Tea, I believe. Sorry, I'm picking up books. Anyway, so this is about a, a woman who runs a bed and breakfast, and she runs it alone because her mother has... Uh, recently passed on she has passed away and before it was her her and her mom ran this bed and breakfast together and so now she is doing it by herself and you know having a little struggle here <clears throat> and for some reason I can't remember why but she does a DNA test and I'm trying to re I can't remember why exactly she does that she does that in the very beginning of the book she does the DNA test and she <laughs> finds out that she has a sister that's older than her, I believe, too. And so she's like, you know, I didn't know anything about this. This obviously the mother never told her that she had a sister. So she reaches out to her sister. And her sister's, uh, so the, the gal that owns the uh, bed and breakfast is named Mia. And her sister that she reaches out to is named Kate. And Kate also is, is recently divorced, I believe, and she also and she has a teenage daughter. And so the mom, when they read the will, leaves leaves the um, leaves everything to her sibling to her daughters. And so Kate comes because they don't live in the same town comes to the bed and breakfast and the sisters meet for the first time and the older sister is kind of a little bit bitter because she was given up for adoption so she 
you know, doesn't know what to think because here she was given up for adoption and yet Mia was raised by her mother and evidently was loved and cherished and, and she feels like she was denied that. So it's a really good story about the sisters coming together, learning about themselves and who they are. And um, it's a whole, and I, like I said, I found these, these books at the library. And there's, she has a whole set of them all about this, this bed and breakfast. This was the first one in the series. And so the end of the book ended with a big twist. And I've, you know, I haven't got back, I haven't got back to reading that series, but I do want to pick it up. And they're really short books too. I want to read because like I said, it ended in a really big uh, twist uh, at the end. So that was for that. Okay, so the next one is Hot as Blue Blaze. It's a book with a hot setting. And for that one, I picked um, a book by Terry Blackstall called Lost Last Light. And this was a book about, and this is a whole series. I think it's the Restoration series. The book about a family that goes through a really horrible thing. One day, all of a sudden, all like electricity and light, everything just shuts down. Phones, uh, cars stop running, you know, anything that has any kind of electrical component just turns off and and it's due to a solar uh, flare i'm thinking it was a flare or something a pulse or something like that and so they're you know back to this basically back to the stone ages and i mean plumbing doesn't work and nothing doesn't work it's what a, you know i'm thinking what a horrible situation and the reason i picked it for hot is blue bases because it started they went through this in the summer and they were in the south had to deal with all of that. So that was a really good book. Uh, like I said, it's part of a series. I, st I have yet to read, I've, I think there's four books, three or four, yeah, I think four books maybe. And I have, I started the last one, but I haven't finished it yet, so. And then the next prompt she gave us was Heaven to Betsy. And that one is, you know, read a mystery or a thriller. And for that one, I wrote, read a, my first Colleen Coble book called One Little, one, one Little Lie. And this one I did enjoy. It was uh, a um, part of a series as well, but I, I haven't read any more in that series. But it, it surrounds, has to do with a woman that's a, uh, I think she's a police uh, sheriff or something like that. And she's, but she's previously come out of a cult. So they have that cult kind of vibe in it with that history with her and it's really interesting. And of course it's a mystery of, uh, that she's uh, solving in her town because she likes that she's the, the sheriff. And so that's, you know, uh, I guess a typical Colleen Coco book that I've seen, but it, I, I, uh, I don't know. I think I gave it three stars. I didn't quite enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but I do have some other books of hers that I'm going to try to read again. I mean, read some more, maybe a different series might, I might enjoy better, more, something like that. <laughs> so there's that one. And then uh, all the fixings. This one is a book in multiple genres. And this book, uh, that I read was probably one of my favorite books of the year last year and that is When the Day Comes by Gabriel Meyer and this one I'm sure a lot of you have seen people rave about this book and if you haven't read it yet please do it is so good and so it's the reason <clears throat> the reason I picked it for multiple genres is because it has romance it has historical fiction and then we have some time travel going on it's just the perfect for me it's just the perfect blend of of a book and this was my first time reading a Gabriel Meyer book and she quickly became one of my favorite authors. I've since read the second book because it's a part of a it's called the Timeless series and so for probably for this um, prompt this year I'm probably going to read the third book because it comes out in May so excited about that. And then we have uh, Chicken and Dumplings, a book that will be a comfort read. And for that one, I picked, oh, I do have that one. Let's see, that one is, um, I'm gonna reach over here, is this one called When the Heart Cries. It just looked like a, a, a sweet story to read that would be like, a, you know, just a comfort read. And this is a book about a young Amish girl that 
is in love with a Mennonite boy and like the difficulties they have, even though they're both Christians, they're in diff different sects. And, and even though one is Mennonite and one's Amish, you would think they would be somewhat similar maybe, but no, there's some conflict with family and everything. And plus she goes through a really horrible experience. And that also brings um, some tension between her and the, the boy she loves. This is also part of a series. It's called the Sisters of the Quilt series. And so this one ends off, you know, we don't know what's going to happen to her and her situation as far as her, what happens. But it, it was a sweet read. I really enjoyed it. And it was my first time reading a wood, Cindy Wood small book. So if you ever need to read any kind of Amish prompt or, you know, just a, a sweet Christian read, this is a, this one's a good one. I recommend that one. And then a book, the next prompt is Hey Y'all, and it's a book with one or more, with more than one point of view. And for that one, I chose um, Lady in the Lionheart by Joanne Bishop. And this one, I have to, I will tell you, I want to read this one over again. I listened to this um, on audio and I really did, I enjoyed the parts that I remember, like I paid attention. I had a hard time listening to it and focusing since it, I think it was one of the first audiobooks I listened to last year. And so I, I knew the premise of the, the book, but I don't, but I think I would have enjoyed it more if I had like actually read it. But it focuses around a, a young nurse, I believe, that meets a lion tamer at a, at a circus. And he is a really godly guy, even in his circus. He, he preaches and things, and he has a backstory, she has a backstory, and it's a really sweet uh, romance. But it's pointed, uh, two point of views because we get his his point of view in the book and then hers and their relationship of how they um, because he is a circus performer and in that day it's a um, historical fiction in that point in time you know circus people weren't you know they were kind of low in the in society and things but she notices that he's a a really good guy a good godly man in spite of you know his circumstances and I one thing I do remember from the book is that he had a lot of tattoos on his arms and everything because he that was part of his not only did he do the lion tamer thing but I think he did tat, you know like tat, the tattooed man kind of thing so that was a really good good book and then um, the last prompt she gave us is Howdy Partner, a book featuring uh, family and friendship. And for that one, I read um, another one of my favorite books of the year last year was <laughs> my hair is um, Before We Were Yours. And this book really got to me. This is the story. were basically stolen from their parents. Um, they're really poor children that live out <laughs> in the bayou and um, their while their mother is um, ha giving birth to twins, she's taken to the hospital and the young children are left uh, home by themselves. And in the time while the, mom, the parents are gone at the hospital, some people come and they take their take the kids and the kids think that they're being taken to the parents like and I think believe they actually tell them that but they actually end up taking them to an orphan orphanage and they soon find out that they are not going to be uh, restored with their, their family they're at this orphanage and they're being treated poorly and it's run by a woman that's awful and and the story and it 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 involved I believe it's two um, it's two times like you see the the future the past uh, um, 
that is happening and then the few and then the um somebody in the the future talking about this i believe i can't remember but anyway it, the story is so emotional with the, with the siblings and what they do oh it is yeah i remember it now Ugh, this book you know i this is this this would be this is one that i i don't own this book this is a library book um but i do i think i would enjoy reading it again it's just so but what really got me at the end of the book you know you all the things that these these children go through at the end of the book in the author's note you read that this woman that ran this orphanage she really she's a real person it was a real person she did these horrible things she would steal children and sell them to the highest bidder basically and if they were and these girls in this in this family they had blonde hair blue eyes and so for for that lady you know these, these girls she could get at a high price there's a bee but big bee bubble bee buzzing around right here these girl these girls for her was were money and but she really did exist she really did take kids steal them and a lot of the children were were actually sold to um hollywood stars back in the day and this happened in the 19 19 early 1940s late 1930s 1940s and she did this and all the kids like i said were either taken were real orphans but a lot of them were taken from their poor poor families that couldn't do anything to get their children back and if you know the actress from back in the day joan crawford they say she got her one some of her children from this woman because she adopted children and the sad thing is that nothing ever happened to this woman legally she was never i mean they knew that she was doing it but she was uh, protected by powerful people she was like friends with high political people um the entertainment you know the entertainment world back then and judges that were you know probably she was paying them off but anyway if you haven't read this book and it's by i'm sorry i didn't say who it was by lisa wingate uh, before we were yours um, I haven't really um, done it justice with my little review here but the Sun is really getting to me right now. <laughs> like ah but it was highly recommend this one and then the last thing is that she gave us a free space and I didn't put that in my in my in my journal and I'm like oh what did I do and then I but I looked on my Goodreads of, of the books that I read at that time and for the by free space I do and then I remembered oh yeah I read uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, which was another favorite read. Now, I gotta tell you, I had some really good reads in Amanda's um, readathon last year. And that was my first Brandon Sanderson novel. And it has to do with a young girl living in a fan fantasy. It's a, it's a, you know, a fantasy. And she lives on this island and she falls in love, loves with a young man and he gets kidnapped are taken and the whole book is her going on an adventure to try to find him or to try to bring him back and the cool thing about that one is her the ocean that she's on this the emerald sea is not water it's made out of like what did they call it uh, spores it's really interesting he's pretty clever that author um yeah i have to read some more from him but anyway, I really love that book. And another thing I loved about it was he had, in the notes, I had read that he he wrote this book for his wife, um, for her. And then she, then they ended up publishing it. But it was the question of, uh, regarding the Princess Bride, you know, what, what would have happened if the Princess Bride, if the princess, instead of just hanging out at her farm, if she would have left and, to try to find farm boy and rescue him from the pirates. It's kind of, it was that kind of a twist, but, or not twist, take on it, where, where they got the, his, where he got the idea, because that was what his wife had asked, I guess. But anyway, those are the books that I read last year for um, Amanda's 
Southern Readathon. And so, in a, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't nailed down when I'm doing this, this, this month or for next month for the new one, but I'll be coming out with that, um, video soon with, for my TBR. And so if you have, um, hopefully you're going to join it, join us all with her, with her TBR. And so down below, let me know if you, if you did it last year, what did you read? And then put, put those down there and people can, um, see, they'll take those as recommendations as well. So let's see what else, anything else I have to say? I think that's pretty much it. I'm really excited for this lovely weather. Just like I could sit out here all day, but then I'd get burnt, <laughs> probably. But it's just so nice. And I don't know, maybe I'll be filming some more out here. Depends on how this video turns out. We'll see, we'll see. But thank you for joining me today. Hope you join us in with Amanda's um, readathon next month. And well, and <laughs> I hope you join us next month for Amanda's readathon. And comment below again if you've read any of these books and what you're planning. If you are going to join us, what what are you planning to read? Or if you have any questions about, you know, I ha I can't find a book <laughs> for this particular prompt and maybe other people in the comments or myself can give you some ideas. All right. You have a blessed day, everyone, and come back and see us again. Bye-bye.